Welcome back to part two of the WPF series, the Windows Presentation Foundation series. My name is Dennis Panyuta for tutorials.eu and if you come to this video after having watched the first one, good job. If you haven't watched the first part of the series, check out that video first. Okay, so in this video, we're going to see how to use text blocks in Code Behind, how to access some of the parameters and also in general, how to build it in Code Behind. As you might know, this is a series, a WPF series of multiple videos. So either they are about to come in the next few days or depending on when you watch it, they are out already. So definitely check out the other videos once you're done with this one and hit that like button it really helps us out. Thank you very much. And now let's get started with the video. In the last video, we looked at the text block and we looked at it in XAML, meaning inside of the designer, so to speak here. Can, however, also access its properties and make changes to a text block inside of our code behind, which means inside of our C Sharp code. Okay, so inside of the main window XAML file, you'll find another file, which is the main window XAML.cs file. So this is a partial class and it's our main window, which is of type window. And you will find that in this class, we have a constructor, which just initializes the components, which basically means that it inflates this UI that we set up here. Okay, so it basically displays the UI that we have set up in XAML. Now we have another method here, which we have set up in the last video, where we used an event. Okay, so this is something that I'm going to disregard in this video. I'm going to focus on the constructor here, on the main window constructor, in which I can now go ahead and basically add elements to my text block or edit my text block in runtime or during runtime. So while my application is running. So what I can do is I can now, for example, use this text block here and give it a name so that I can access it. So let's give it a name and I'm going to call this one my text block. Now, after I have given it a name using X colon name and then equals with the name that I assigned to it here, I can now access it directly inside of the code behind of that particular XAML file. So here I can access my text block and I can change its properties. So here, for example, you can just use a dot and then let Visual Studio give you some hints on what you could change. So I could, for example, change the foreground color. I could change the text itself. So I could change the text to something like hello from the CS site. Okay, so this will be now the new text that will be displayed for my text block. So only the top text block will be influenced here. And let me drag it over. So it says hello from the CS side, CS standing for C sharp. Now for reduced complexity, I'm going to get rid of this additional text block that I had here. Okay, so this will make our UI a little lighter and we can actually focus on whatever we have in the text block. Okay, so I overwrote whatever I have written here. So you can see you can overwrite whatever settings you have defined inside of your XAML file using your code behind. So your C sharp code. I can now, of course, change up all of the properties that my text block has that I have defined in here. So for example, well, I didn't use a foreground here, but I can use a foreground. So I could, for example, change the color to something that I like more. So let me stop running the application. Otherwise we get this warning here constantly. And here I would use the brushes and they allow me to use different colors. Okay, so brushes are basically the colors that you would use for text blocks. So here I could use a blue color, for example. All right, now if we run this, quick pause. This video is sponsored by one of my courses. So you're learning something about WPF in this video and I have a complete C Sharp masterclass which teaches you a lot more about C Sharp if you feel like you need to learn more about C Sharp to understand everything that's going on. And then if you want to learn everything you need to know about WPF, definitely check out my WPF course. It's a 15 hour course which will teach you everything you need to know about WPF, building an entire Windows Store clone using my apps in order to achieve this Metro design, which is the design language, so to speak, for 
the latest Windows 10 applications. You can find a link in the description down below and there you get a huge discount, so don't miss out. Get one of the courses or both of them now. And now let's get back to the video. We will see that my text now is blue. Okay, so that is the color settings that you can set up for your text block. Now, what you can also do is instead of using the text block that you have set up here, you can create an entire text block even without using any text block that you have in your XAML code. Okay, so let's build up a text entirely in code behind, so in C Sharp. And therefore, I'm also going to get rid of this event because otherwise my application might crash. Okay, so what you can do is you can directly create a new text block here. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a new text block, which will be of type new text block. Now, of course, I need to give it a name. I'm going to call this my TB. Okay, and now I can access my TB and change its properties. An interesting one would be to add text to it. So I can either set the text directly like this, something like hello world and run this and it will not do anything. So in order to make sure that this will be in fact visible, I need to make this the content of the current main window. So I can just make this my TB the content of this. And by this, the main window, you can click on it, you can see the main window will be highlighted, which now means that the main window will be getting the content of my TB. So it will not even have a stack panel as its content, it will directly have my text block as its parent view or its main view, so to speak, or in this case, main control. Okay. So you can see here it says hello world. Okay. We just wrote this directly inside of code behind. So directly using C sharp. And alternatively, you can use the inlines property. Okay. So you can add to the inlines property here. You don't set the inlines property, but you actually add to it. So here you can add something like this. Okay. This is added using inlines, for example, if you run this again, then we can see this is added using inlines and I can change the size of the window as you see here and it will cut off. So how can we fix that? Well, maybe you recall which properties we have used the last time to make sure that it's going to overflow. Well, we used the text wrapping property. So let's use my TB and here text wrapping and let's set it up as the text wrapping that we wanted. Okay, so text wrapping dot and here wrap with overflow or just wrap. Okay, so you can see text wrapping is an enum that has a couple of different settings, which we can directly assign to this text wrapping property. If you look at it, text wrapping expects a pro object of type text wrapping. So if you hover over it, you will see that it expects this text wrapping, which is inside of text block. Okay, and it's an enum in text block. And this goes for any different type of setting that you get here. So any type of property that you would use here. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to set the foreground, you can also hover over it. And it will tell you that you need to assign a brush here. So if you want to change the color of it, you would create or use a brush here. And even there, you, if you don't know the different brushes that there are, just use brush and then see what kind of settings that gives you. Now, if I hover over it again, I see it says brush, but if I enter brush, it also offers me brushes. So maybe brushes is the right one. So we can just play around with those because brushes contains a brush or individual brushes. Okay, so you can then just use those as an example. Okay, so I'm going to use birdie wood just to test it. So what that will do is it will now wrap our text as well as it will change the foreground of my text, which means it will change the color of my text. So let's run it again. 
So there we are, hello world. And then this is added using inlines. So whatever we added, we added it using inlines and it changed the wrapping to wrap. So the text is actually wrapped, you can see using and then inlines is in the next line. Even if I make this window smaller, you can see it will wrap it accordingly. And the color is burly wood, which is this brownish color that we're using. And you can also use underlines as well as italic or bold text directly using code behind as well. And let's have a look at how to do that real quick. So here we would use inlines again and we would add. And here that's the more tricky one. So if you want to add a text block that you can then that you can then design, you would use a new run. Okay, so this is an inline level flow content element intended to contain a run of formatted or unformatted text. Even though I think this keyword is very weird, like uh, I wouldn't have thought of using run here, but that's how it is. So now we can create some text that we want to assign here. So for example, I want to call this one run text that I added in code behind. Okay, and here I could now define specifically which kind of properties I want to use for that run text. Okay, and I would do that using curly brackets. Okay, so basically I can now define the different properties for that particular part of the text. So I could, for example, change the color of only that particular part to be brushes dot red, for example. Okay, so now the foreground will be red, but I can also change up other properties directly. So I could make this, for example, using text decorations being text decorations dot and underline. This would underline the text. You can see I just need to add this comma and then I can add a new property change. Then I could add another comma and then add the next property change and so forth. Okay, now if we run this again, then we will see that we have this new text that is going to be in red, which says run text that I added in code behind. And it has this decoration of underlined. Okay, so that's really something that you can play around with. I believe this is going to be good enough for a start. And if you want to have a specific change or want to design your text in a specific way, then you know how to do it either in XAML or in your main window XAML CS, which will be the code behind, of course. And if you want to know more about it, always just check out what the documentation has to offer. Okay, so the documentation has to offer a lot. So if you look at text blocks, you can see how the text block class looks like, and then the different fields that it has. So the background property, but also the general properties that it has. So we just looked at some of them. If you want to know more about them, you can always just check out the documentation for it. So you made it all the way to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching it, and I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a like, and if you loved it, then leave us up. I love to help you out, but if you could help us out, then just hit the like button. That's really awesome. All right, so that's it for part two of the series. So there will be another video, and if you're watching it in the future, then it will be out already. So check out the next video in the playlist right here.